Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, today we have so much that we are getting done. If you are in need of some motivation or just a friend to hang out with, you have absolutely come to the right spot. Today I am compiling several of my favorite videos into one super long, super motivating marathon. We are going to be deep cleaning, getting all of those nitty gritty areas all tackled. We are going to be decorating. We are also going to be getting some decluttering done because I don't know about you, but there is always something in need of being decluttered in my house. So if your house is the same way, don't worry, I got you. We can do this together. And then I'm also going to be sharing several different recipes in today's video. And I always go for like simple, easy recipes and kid-friendly recipes because we have three boys. Now, before we get into everything, I would love to know, are you planning to clean along with me today and tackle your to-do list, whatever you have going on? Or did you just click on this video for some company to hang out with a friend? Either way, I am so happy you're here. And if you are not already subscribed, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button down below and join the family. We have so many things going on around here. This video will actually be really neat because you will get to see what our house looked like just a few months ago because right now it is looking so different. We have done several home makeovers since I filmed these videos. We've also done lots of house projects, like so many things have changed. So anyway, enough talking, let's get into the good stuff. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be starting to decorate for spring. I don't know how it is where you guys live, but here in Arizona, we have been like abnormally cold. When I say that, it's been like 50 degrees and we are freezing here. <laughs> It's kind of ridiculous, but we're used to a lot warmer weather. So I am kind of willing spring into existence by adding it into our house. And I'm so excited because winter has just felt so long this year. Also, I did get back from an actually really cold place, Montana, where I was visiting my mom. I am so ready for winter to be done and spring to be here. So we do have you know, the usual. We are going to be getting some cleaning motivation as we tidy up the main living area. And then we are going to be decorating, taking all these down and decorating for spring, just kind of throughout the main living area and up in like the cove upstairs. So if you guys are ready for spring as much as I am, let's go ahead and get into it. I wanna hear you say it. I love, especially in the springtime and summer, kind of when you're opening up those windows, I love starting to diffuse some oils and just get that nice fresh feeling started, especially when you have like a big day of cleaning or organizing or decluttering, decorating all those kind of homemaking things ahead of you. It's just nice to get that little scent going throughout the house and kind of motivate you that way. I have some exciting news. We are actually going to be going to different countertop stores in the area this week 
to be picking out our new counters for our kitchen renovation. And of course, we will be vlogging it all. So that will be over on the Kyle and Amanda channel. Just kind of like some of the behind the scenes process of our kitchen makeover. But that should be happening this month. And I am just so beyond excited and a little bit in disbelief because we've been working towards this goal of redoing our kitchen ever since moving in almost two years ago. And I just can't believe that we are finally to that point now. But I also wanted to get your guys' opinions on what type of countertop. Right now we are going for granite. That's what we've had. That's what we know. That's what we love. But I know there are a lot of other options out there. So if you have personally had any experience with any of the other countertop types, let me know in the comments which ones you love, which ones you don't love, and just kind of any information you have on that. I would greatly appreciate it. Who remembers when I transformed this old dresser I got from Facebook Marketplace into this beautiful, more modern buffet? It honestly looks completely different than it did whenever I bought it on Facebook Marketplace, but we just love it now. And I actually have several other Facebook Marketplace finds sitting in our garage currently that I really need to get working on. But let me know in the comments, have you ever flipped furniture? I feel like a lot of people are really overwhelmed with the idea of it and feel like it's very unattainable, but it really isn't that difficult especially if you just kind of get something for a cheap price and then you're able to just kind of experiment with it and you learn a lot more as you go now i used to actually do this for a bunch of the furniture that we had in our house previously and i love doing that because you can get a really great deal customize it and put your own spin on it and you end up with a really great piece that would have cost a lot more than what you actually paid so that's definitely like a hobby of mine that i just don't give enough time to but i love the process of that also side note i love this little planter that I got from Walmart. I am just using it as a fruit bowl, but I love that it's so bright and fresh for spring. Finding our way back somehow. I lose my breath whenever I see you. You stole my heart. What is it that you do? Here I'm just refilling a few of our pantry containers and I actually really need to get back in there and just kind of tidy it up a little bit, especially after doing my mom's pantry last week. I'm just really excited to get my pantry looking kind of how it should be because it's definitely gotten a bit out of hand. A lot of things have really stayed nice, but it could always use some work. But let me know in the comments if you saw last week's pantry video and if you did, what you thought of it. I just need you. I don't know what it is you do I just want you I just need you I don't know what it is you do I just want to love you I just want to hold you just want to be with you till we grow old Just tell me you'll stay or take me away I want you for myself every single day You say Now I'm just tackling our never ending dishes. I swear we have more dirty dishes than we actually use. It's the same thing with laundry. Like how do we have laundry constantly piling up when I know we're not doing a bunch of outfit changes throughout the day, but we just have so much laundry that needs to get done all the time. Those are definitely the two chores in the house that always, always need to get done. Even when you think you're finished with them all, you look in the sink or you look in the dirty bin and there is more stacking up already before your eyes. But I was thinking about this the other day. If there was one chore that you could never ever have to do in your life again, what would it be? I feel like a lot of people are going to say dishes or laundry just because they are never ending. For me, I would say laundry at this point. I just hate having to wash everything and especially like organize it and put it all away. Definitely I could do without laundry for the rest of my life and never ever miss it. Let me walk along the path you put your light on. Got you see behind the faces that I try.
right on, yeah, that's why. The new bloom towels arrived for spring. This is their spring collection. I have not even opened them up. I figured I would open them up with you guys and show you what they got, but I can already tell they're so cute. How cute is this? This one has some florals, some eggs, and then on the other side is just this really, really pretty like mint green plaid color. How pretty is that? Oh my gosh, I can't decide which side I like. This one has like yellow, mint green, purple, and white and pink plaid. And then on this side is just purple stripes. So just very simple and subtle. And then how cute is this one? This one has these little, little white flowers with the yellow center on the pink on the outside. And then the other side is yellow plaid. How adorable is that? I love this. I feel like it's between these two are my favorite ones for the spring collection. But as always, I will have a link down below and I believe the code is just Amanda and I think it saves you 15% off. These sell out insanely fast, so definitely check it out down below if you want to snag some. And they also have the ones that they have like all year round as well. Also, I didn't even ask, but what is the weather like where you live? It's so crazy to me that some of us have had a super mild winter while others have had the complete opposite and it's been way more intense and cold and harsh. Here for us in Arizona, we have definitely had a colder winter than normal and I pretty much hated it. You guys probably know I hate cold weather. I love warm weather. And even though in Arizona, it doesn't get like freezing, freezing cold, it feels very cold to me and I'm not here for it. And I would a hundred percent opt for a way more intense summer than a harsh winter. But let me know, would you rather have way colder weather or way hotter weather? Gazing at the blue of the night Stars are filling up the sky You take my hand in yours We'll make our own constellations I could say how much you mean To me, but it won't mean a thing Cause words never sound quite right 
Let's find our own kind of language. We have searched the whole world. We are making some progress. The kitchen is all clean. It feels nice and tidy in there. We are gonna tackle the living room. And I actually just saw something on Instagram. It's ideal to put two chairs up against a window and couches like that way so that you can really view out into like the window view. Like I've literally never thought to do that. So we might rearrange a little bit in here cause you know, why not? We don't have a whole lot to tidy in here. Just kind of tidy up the pillows and like whatever randomness is here. And then I'm actually going to start by pulling all of the decor down off of the shelves. I did just, you know, put some of these decor pieces up as like transitional pieces between winter and spring. And I did wipe them down, but my guess is I'm still going to <laughs> need to redust up there. So we'll do that as well. We'll kind of see what time we're left with. I got started on time today. Like I was on my game today, but Liam and Noah both had like an eat lunch with parents today. And so I went to their school and that just took up a lot of time. So much fun. I'm so happy that we got to do that today. It did just kind of cut into my time, but that's okay. No worries. It can always be done later. So we'll get as much done as we can today. And then I'm sure we'll continue some of it or a bit of it tomorrow. I did want to let you guys know we are going to do a pre-order for these new This Crazy Life tumblers. I actually shared a community post here on YouTube and I also shared over on Instagram and Facebook, but we launched these tumblers in very limited quantities last week and they sold out in like two days. So we are going to be offering a pre-order for anyone who missed out on them and they are going to be coming in, I believe five different colors, but I will have the link down below so you can go ahead and check them out. They will only be available for pre-order this week, but all that information will be on the link. Hi Felix. I'm going to ask for your guys' opinions on something. Do you think that I should redo our coffee table? When I purchased it after moving in, I actually didn't love the color. I felt like it was very dark. They did have a lighter option, but it was out of stock forever. And then when they finally got it in stock somewhere, it was like $100 more expensive. And I'm like, I'm not gonna pay $100 for a color. So I just went ahead and got this one and it kind of has worked out well. I feel like it matches our floors but I do kind of think it would look nice to have a lighter color in here. So let me know, do you think I should kind of try to refinish it in a lighter wood color, or do you think I should paint it or just leave it as is? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. No one's ever seen. No one's ever seen. I'm not sure if I like it or if I don't, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. It's easy enough to switch, especially when Kyle's here. So either way, it's something new. So that's always a good thing to just kind of change things up. But I'm gonna go get the ladder or a little step stool so I can grab the things off the top shelves, start clearing that off and getting it all wiped down. coasters for our coffee table but this little like coaster holder was actually a candle that we got from Walmart I don't know back in probably like October November December and basically it's one of the ones that has two different scents and so I just cleaned it out you can either use like hot water to kind of soften the wax and clean it out or you can actually pop it in your freezer the wax just kind of like pops out of the candle you can clean it up and then it works so perfect 
as a little coaster holder and it didn't cost anything extra and you can get them in different colors like i just thought this was so cool and i finally found like a really great way to store our coasters this way is this the way it's supposed to go wait until your life looks beautiful So to clean the shelves, I am just using my full circle duster. I have had this for years and I love that it's reusable. You can take the actual duster part off, toss it in the wash, and then when it gets really worn down, you can actually buy just a replacement piece for that. So it just works super, super well and also super random, but how cute are these slippers? I got them on Amazon recently. I'll link them down below, but they are just the cutest thing. I feel like there's no way to wear them and look down at your feet and then not smile, which anything that can make you smile a little bit more is always a win. Also, I'm just jumping from one thing to the next, but I wanted to let you guys know this vacuum. I've had it for a couple years and it works amazingly. It also bends about halfway through so you can get underneath your furniture super easily and it's actually on sale, like a crazy good deal right now. Normally it's about $350 and I just saw it go on sale a few days ago for under $200. So that's almost 50% discount. Definitely check it out. I'm not sure how long this is going to last and I'm not sure how long they'll keep it in stock, but I'll have that link down below. Definitely check it out. I would highly recommend this vacuum if you need like a really good cordless vacuum. And it does work very well on hard floors and on carpet. It is a new day but we have everything like nice and clean. We recleaned last night, of course, because you know, things just get out of hand quickly here. But today we are going to start out with one, I wanted to make like a fun DIY room spray, perfect for spring. It's also like, of course, super budget friendly and just simple to do. And then we are going to actually DIY a few little decor pieces, like remake some of the decor pieces that I already have to make them feel fresh and new and something that kind of fits into our style a little bit more right now. And then we are going to get into actually decorating everything. So we're gonna decorate the shelves, decorate a little bit in the kitchen and dining room. This year I can actually decorate up in our loft area. So we're going to try to do that today as well. We also have those recipes today. So we have like all the fun stuff going on today. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay. So the thing we're gonna start out with today is making a room spray. So I just have this amber bottle. It's actually a room spray bottle that I had gotten from Grove Collaborative a while ago. So it was just in my cleaning closet, but you can find these on Amazon. You might even be able to find them at the Target Dollar Spot, things like that. So I have this, I wanna say it's like an eight ounce bottle. I have half a cup of water, and then I also have witch hazel. It just makes the scent kind of linger a little bit longer. And then I'm just going to add in some drops of my essential oils. You can make whatever concoction you like with that. For spring, I am such a sucker for citrus and like fruity scents. So I just have some grapefruit and then I also have some lemon. I'm gonna do pretty much half and half, maybe a few extra of the grapefruit just cause I love that scent. Let's go ahead and put this together. I love a good room spray and these are so fun to make yourself because you can really customize all the scents but you can just go around spray them on fabrics or in the air and just freshen up your home instantly all right the next thing I want to do is actually kind of just change up um, some decor I already have I wanted to go in here this is kind of like some 
everyday random decor. We kind of hold on to things sometimes for makeovers that we might do or you know just whatever to kind of change things up. And this guy is the one that I want to DIY. So I got this two years ago and it was on clearance. I love the shape of it. Like it just has like these different I don't know, like divots in it and it just looks really cool. However, can you see like that blue? It just doesn't really fit. It looks very out of place. And so I am just going to change this up. And this is something you can do if you wanna just change up your decor without having to go out and buy new stuff. You can really get a totally different look just by spray painting something or painting it a different color or you know doing various things to it. So today we are going to spray paint it, but not just with any old spray paint. I'm trying out that stone spray paint. I've seen it done and it just looks really cool and you know just for a couple dollars with spray paint like you can totally change something up like this so we can kind of make our own decor exactly what we want on a budget it did say to prime it and i think i probably will need to spray a little primer on it just to cover up that blue but that is so cool i love that super quick and easy too so we are going to let that dry outside for a few minutes but while we're doing that i wanted to put together some pictures so i just have some frames i think we're gonna put the 8x10 in this like floating frame and then i'll put the more vintage one on this frame but i'll have to just take out the mat so let's go ahead and get those put in but this is such a great way to change out your decor you buy one frame you can even thrift a bunch of frames like they're so cheap at the thrift store you can even rub and buff it or spray paint it to like change it up and then you can go on etsy and there are thousands of downloadable prints and everything that you can use and the great thing about this is like i can use this for spring and then for summer print or whatever fall so it's just super nice to be able to do this and it's just really easy honestly We're gonna head outside and I'm gonna spray paint like a little color onto that base thing. This is just the one in the heirloom white. I'll spray paint it with this color to give it some good coverage and then I'll probably re-spray paint it again with that stone just to give it more texture. So you can kind of see like that blue color in there but the texture is so pretty. majority of this are things that we're using from previous years. The reason that I like to take everything down from the shelf is so that I can put it up in a new way. It feels fresh and new and exciting and so I kind of like to restyle every single season. By adding just a few little pieces here and there that are new, it will also freshen up all of your old decor as well. So that's just like a few tips that I have to decorate your house on a budget without having to go out every new, every season and buy a bunch of new decor and breaking the bank that way. So we're gonna go ahead and start decorating these shelves. I do wanna save a spot for that pot, but I don't think it's dry yet. So we're gonna have to wait on that one, but we'll just start kind of slowly but surely getting things decorated. I do still have these things from the shelves the other day and I have, you know, a few things in here. So as I'm decorating, I can always come pull from these. I can always DIY, paint them, change them up, things like that to add into the space. So I think we should be good. You see things that get added that wasn't on the couch. That's, that's where they're coming from. Somewhere else in my house is looking a little bare, but we'll fill in the blanks kind of as we go. I'm already feeling a little overwhelmed with the bare shelves over there and just knowing like I have all this stuff and I have to somehow style it to make sense and you know look pleasing to the eye and all that stuff. So I'll just kind of take you guys along with me on this a little bit more in depth than I have done in the past and hopefully that will help. But definitely let me know what you guys think if you would rather just 
you know, sit back and watch or if you kind of want to be in my head a little bit more about like what I'm doing and why. So one of the first things that I like to do is figure out where to put the big items because they will be limited on where exactly they can go. And typically I like to put like one larger item on each shelf and then I can kind of accent those pieces with some smaller items. So that's what I'm gonna kind of start by doing first is figuring out which larger item I want on each shelf. Once I get a larger item on the shelf, I will then add in typically one to two more pieces to try and use the rule of three. And then I just kind of play around with adding and taking away decor pieces until it all looks perfect. And I also like to add in different heights and textures to each shelf just to add interest. And I love including real and faux florals and greenery just to give life to any space. But I always make sure to keep the real live ones down on the bottom shelf so that they can be easily reached and watered and not given a death sentence because I try my hardest to keep all my plants happy and alive. You guys, I love this little vase. I got it from World Market. This was like the one thing on my list that I really wanted to make sure to get this spring. I saw it months ago and it's just been on my mind ever since. Now let's talk for just a second about coffee table books. Coffee table books are always a great addition. They have lots of photos for inspiration and there's something really easy to look at and read if you're just sitting on the couch board and they also double as decor. It's such a win all around. This one is a live plant, so I want to incorporate this, but I also want to keep it alive, and so I want to have it on the bottom to keep it easy to water. And then we always have this dish here. This just hold, holds remotes. I always want to have this obviously down here because I'm all about function first. Nope, still not quite right. However, I did love this yellow floral piece with the flowers sort of spraying over the remote bowl, just kind of creating that added interest. Plus, I absolutely loved the pop of color on that bottom shelf. I'm honestly kind of at a loss for what to do with this shelf right now. So I'm just going to move on and we'll come back to it. There's nothing else to do because I can just like stick around on the shelf for quite a while and I'll probably get frustrated and it won't turn out good or I'll just move on and then it'll kind of come together. But I'm going to take a break on this one because I'm stumped. <laughs> I went out and checked on the base and it is looking amazing. I put on one more coat of the stone stuff. However, it is not even really close to being dry. So I'm gonna have to leave that out there for a while. I have this piece. It's not the same, but it's kind of like the same height and it's a similar kind of color. So I'm gonna put this up as a place saver 
for the vase that we just DIY'd. And then once that's done, I'll actually come back in and like replace this one. But for now, I'm just gonna put this up so that I can kind of envision what it's gonna look like in my mind. At our house, we typically eat at our table and use it every day, so I've never really been one to do a big fancy tablescape. As beautiful as they are, and as much as I wish I would do that because I just love the look of them, but they're just not really functional for our family. So instead, I just change out the table runner and add a pretty decorative fruit bowl and call it a day. And then on the buffet, I'm just adding a few live plants and getting those watered. I don't typically do a whole lot in the kitchen just because I really use my kitchen all the time and I'm cooking in here all the time. But I do decorate with a few different things. One is dish towels. You guys know I love bloom towels just because you can decorate for the season. They're double-sided, they're super absorbent, so they're very functional as well as just cute. But then the other thing that I do in the kitchen is add fresh flowers. This is not a functional thing. However, it does make me feel very happy. So my favorites are actually Actually, carnations they're my mom's favorite too and I love them because one they're like very inexpensive and two they last for a really long time I can usually make it a lot cheaper when I make it myself versus buying a pre-made floral arrangement at the store and I typically go for fairly neutral ones but since we're in spring I decided to add a pop of spring colors so we have this one with like really pretty purple and white flowers and then these green leaves and then I just have some white flowers to kind of make up the bulk of the arrangement and then I think we might go ahead and head upstairs into the loft and just do a quick decorate up there for spring, add some color and life to the space, and then we'll come back down and work on the recipes, which I am so excited for. I'm not like hungry yet, but my mouth is watering thinking about them, so it's gonna be good. Everything down here is looking really nice, minus we're gonna still wait for that one pot to dry and put it up on the shelves. But I'm going to put this wreath up. I got this, I wanna say from Kirkland's. Gosh, we were in Utah, so it was maybe like 2019. We've had this a really long time. This is our stinky football closet door. You do not want to smell in there. It is not pleasant. <laughs> it's like kinda what you see when you come in. So, pop that up. It looks so pretty, I'll just kinda adjust that a little bit and then we will go ahead and head upstairs to the loft.
So if you're new here, you would not even recognize this area from the end of last year. We used to have a huge mirror right here. This entire room was painted blue. And then recently, like within the last month, we actually just changed this over. It was the same desk and built-in area, but it was, you know, like that builder grade oak color. And so we actually used Beyond Paint, painted this all, added hardware, just made it kind of match the flow of everything. But this is really the area that we're gonna be decorating is this shelf right here. And then possibly maybe adding a blanket or something right here, just to make it a little bit more springy and vibrant in this room. I absolutely love this arch bookshelf that we have in this loft area. We got it from Amazon and then for the decor, I am only using decor that we already had. So to me, this area isn't really screaming spring although it is very cute. So over on the TV stand, I brought in spring a little bit more intensely by adding these faux tulips that I got last year. They are like those real life looking ones. So they look really nice and pretty, super colorful. And I just put them in a little vase that we already had. And voila, now it's looking a little bit more springy up here. Another thing that I wanted to do is actually take the blanket ladder that we had in our living room and go ahead and bring that up to the loft area. And then to fill the spot that the blanket ladder was at, I'm just bringing over a plant that used to be there. And this worked out so nice because we have not really had a great place to put blankets up in the loft. So now we have a nice place to store all of our blankets up there and we're still not having to buy anything new. We're just using the things that we already had. Just about everything is decorated down here. Usually we will change out like the pillow covers. However, I've just actually been really liking the ones that we have going on and they're neutral, so they don't really need to be changed out. However, I always get questions on where I get my pillow covers and where I get my inserts. So I get both from Amazon typically. They have such a huge selection and I always get the choppable pillows. I have those all linked, just like pretty much everything else that I can find linked in my Amazon favorites, which is always down below in the description box. All that to say, I'm not going to be changing out the pillow covers today. However, I did get this one from Home Goods. I typically don't do this. However, it does come like with an, a pillow cover so that I can take this out. And this one right here has just been being used for years and years and it's very tired. So I'm going to swap it out for this guy. And then I also need to style the coffee table and then we'll be all done and decorating. Now usually I will opt for lower decor on our coffee table, but this time I actually tried this taller vase and some olive branches that we had, and I really loved the final look. You guys will have to let me know what you think. Here is that vase that we changed up with the stone finish and I've got to say I am such a fan. It looks totally different and actually way more high end to me now and I feel like it just fit on the built-in shelves so perfectly. I'm definitely going to be picking up more of those stone spray bottles and spraying a lot more decor with the stone finish because it just looks so so gorgeous. If 
I love how the shelves turned out this year. I feel like they're very springy, but not in like a very in your face, hello, it's springtime kind of vibe. They're just more subtle and laid back, but I feel like you can look at them and absolutely know it is springtime outside. We have a lot of florals, a lot of greenery, a lot of life in the space. We have some of those bright colors kind of popping through. And then our kitchen at the moment is kind of as it is normally. Not too much has changed other than we've added those bloom towels and the live flowers. And then on the dining table, we have that new really lightweight table runner and that pretty white fruit bowl. I love, love, love love that piece and then just that added greenery touch on the buffet and I really just ended up loving how this year turned out like I said it's not in your face spring but I feel like you look at it and just definitely know it is springtime here at least in the page house it is spring <laughs> All right, you guys, it is a new day and we are going to make those Jamie's recipes. They actually both come from two of the cookbooks I got recently. This one I ordered on Amazon, Practically Paleo. She has like the yummiest, very simple recipes. This one I actually picked up at a secondhand bookstore up in Montana. If you guys have been here for a while, you guys know I did AIP for a while and then now I'm kind of more paleo. And I do that for my Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disorder where my body basically attacks my thyroid constantly. So I am gluten-free, dairy-free, and a lot of other things. But the thing that I love about paleo foods is if you don't eat paleo, like you really don't notice that it's paleo. It's just a bunch of whole foods, except you're not having like grains and things like that in your food. So first, I think we're gonna start with the dessert the treat because it actually takes longer to make. Lemon curd cakes is what they are officially called. And I will have these cookbooks linked down below, but they are both incredible, especially the Practical Paleo. I love hers so, so much, but we're gonna start with by making the lemon curd cakes. And then we are going to make some delicious buffalo chicken lettuce wraps. They are so simple and they're done in a different way that I've never done previous to this recipe. So you guys are going to love both of them, but let's start with the yummy lemon one. Yesterday I told you I think that we made a mistake Cause you and I we lost our sight It's all about give and take I don't wanna see when you're at First we're going to do some prep I mean like the pre-prep. So we're gonna preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And then I'm also going to boil some water. I'm just using our little electric pitcher. And the reason we're doing that is because we're actually going to be taking like a baking dish or a roasting pan and then adding custard cups in there. You can see how they just fit in there. And then we're going to do like a little water, boiling water bath on the outside. So I'm just gonna take a little scoop of the coconut oil and add it into a bowl and I'll heat this in the microwave just so it melts a little bit and it'll be easier to kind of distribute. I don't know if you can tell it's all melted in there. So now I'm just going to go through every custard cup and just make sure it's fully coated on the inside and the walls. Okay, so we are going to start by whisking together the egg yolks, honey, lemon zest, and lemon juice, and coconut milk, and then also the vanilla bean seeds. One vanilla bean is equal to one teaspoon of vanilla extract or one teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. So this recipe calls for one vanilla bean, so I'm actually gonna do two teaspoons of vanilla bean paste. Okay, so now we're going to take a minute and just whisk this until everything is nice and combined. Once that's whisked, we are going to add in one and a half tablespoons of coconut flour, as well as a quarter tablespoon of sea salt. So this is what it's looking like right now. It's very, very runny. So we are going to let this sit for about 10 minutes. And while that sits, we are going to go ahead and beat this with a handheld mixer. And then we're going to blend it until like you get some stiff peaks. So you can see it's getting nice and frothy, but there's no peaks, so I'm gonna keep on going.
We are almost there. They're getting closer, but it's still not quite too like stiff peak, so we're gonna keep on going. Now that we have beat the egg whites until they have stiff peaks, we are just going to take it and fold it into the batter until everything is well incorporated. And then we will go ahead and put them in their custard cups, pour the boiling water around it and pop them in the oven for, I believe, 30 minutes. Like a diamond, you alone. You cut my heart like glass, just like that. Like a lion, uncontrolled. You work us on my back Just like that Okay, while those lemon curd cakes bake, we are going to start on the buffalo chicken lettuce wraps. These could not be easier. All you're going to do is make a buffalo seasoning blend. Then we're going to just slice up all the chicken breast, get those coated in the seasoning. Then we're gonna pop them on a fry pan and just cook those up on the stove for a few minutes. You could also make it, I think, in the air fryer, but today we're gonna to do it on the stove and then you just assemble. It is so quick and easy and it's super, super yummy. So let's make those up, see if we can beat the clock before the lemon curd cakes are done. So before we get started on that, actually we are about halfway through the cooking process. So we're gonna turn these around and that will just create more even cooking time. Okay, so in a small bowl, we are going to add in two teaspoons of chipotle powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, as well as half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then just give that a good mix. I'm just gonna cut this into thin little strips and I'm also gonna make sure they're not too long just so we can fit them on the small little butter leaves. So really quickly, I wanted to mention, I have had these caraway pans for about a year now. They have held up so great and I love them so much. And they are actually having a sale for the next few weeks. I will have that information down below, but I believe you get cash back or a gift card or something if you buy anything on their website. So I'll definitely have that link down below for you. Everything is done cooking. I did taste a bite of the lemon curd custard cakes. They are so delicious. They do need to set up, so I just took a little bite just to try it. The chicken is all done and cooked, so now we're just going to put everything together. And if you actually make my homemade ranch dressing, you can add that to the top of these. It just makes them so yummy and creamy, but if not, it's totally fine too. Once we're done like kind of plating everything, I will tackle the last minute dishes that we just made a mess of and then we'll be all done. I was facing all the sunlight while our feet swung freely from the bridge, the bridge. You asked if I'd save you. This looks amazing. These are good. Mm -hmm. 
One thing that I did forget to mention is that these lemon curd cakes will never be fully set up like a traditional cake, but instead the top will be like a cake and then underneath that surface, it will be a curd or pudding like texture. It is so incredibly delicious. If you are a lemon person like me, then this is definitely going to be right up your alley. You are going to love it. And I love that it's also pretty healthy as far as desserts go. And as always, if you try any of the recipes that I share here on my channel, definitely let me know in the comments what you think. I always love hearing the feedback on which ones end up being your favorites. And also, if you want to check out more of the recipes that I've shared on my channel, I will link my cook with me playlist and also my homemaking playlist down below. I have no idea how many actual recipes I've shared, but it is a lot. So if you're needing some more recipe inspiration to kind of change things up in your home, be sure to check out those playlists. And here I am doing dishes once again. They are never ending. You see what I mean? They just are always, always, always there waiting for you. But anyway, it feels so nice to have our house decorated for spring, making it feel nice and springy inside. I actually feel like the weather the last few days has been kind of getting a hint that we're over winter. And here in Arizona, at least, we are starting to feel those spring temperatures come up. We're starting to see a lot of buds on the trees and it's just... Uh, it's one of my favorite times of year where you're just seeing life kind of sprout up all around you. It's so inspiring and just so needed, I feel, after a long winter. And let me know in the comments, have you already decorated for spring? Do you decorate for spring or do you just watch these videos just for fun to kind of get some ideas and inspiration? If you have already decorated for spring, I would love if you'd tag me over on Instagram so I can see your space and see kind of what things that you've decided to do in your own home. But anyway, we have been busy, busy bees over here and I'm so excited for next week's video because I actually went into our master bathroom Room, and there are going to be some crazy embarrassing moments in there. I'm sharing it all. We're getting some cleaning done and above all, we are getting that place decluttered and super, super organized. It just feels like a whole new bathroom and I'm so here for it. It's been something that's definitely been on my to-do list for a very, very long time and we are finally getting that done. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you guys next week. You definitely don't wanna miss out on that. So if you're not already a part of the family, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It is absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything, but that way you're going to be notified on any time that I share new content. I hope you guys got tons of spring inspiration and enjoyed spending some of your day with me. And like I mentioned earlier, if you are in need of some new recipes, I'm going to link my homemaking playlist right here. So you can go ahead and check that out on the right side of the screen. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are in my bathroom and my bathroom very seriously needs a few things. One, it needs to be cleaned and two, it actually very much needs to be decluttered and organized because we are coming up on living in this house for almost two years now, which is crazy. I don't know where the time has gone, but I have not a single time decluttered or organized this bathroom. And when I show you inside the cabinets, you are going to believe me completely. <laughs> it definitely looks like that. So we have a lot to get done in here. I have put this off so many times. I've come up with a thousand reasons why I didn't have time to do this or why, you know, it needed to get pushed to the bottom of the list. But today is the day we are finally tackling it. Let's get to it. I wanna hear you say it.
So our ultimate goal here is to have a organized bathroom, but before we can organize, we need to declutter. Before we can declutter, we need to deep clean. And before we can deep clean, we need to tidy things up. But so far we have decluttered our kitchen this year. That was huge. I also decluttered my closet and both of those places have felt like such a breath of fresh air. And it's just amazing how much you accumulate when you're not decluttering regularly or when you don't do these big purges. It really makes such a big difference. So I am so beyond excited to be doing this today and I'm excited to take you guys along with me and hopefully share all of this crazy motivation with you so that you can go through your own home, find the places that you need to declutter, deep clean, organize all the things and get to it with me today. And before we get going too far into this, go ahead and let me know in the comments, are you just watching and hanging out with a friend today and kind of banking this motivation for later? Or are you watching along with me as you declutter something or clean something in your own home? Let me know. You definitely do not have to feel alone in this. We are all working together today and getting things done and making our home the place that we know it can be and the place that we want it to be. So let's do this. I've shared this before, but my very favorite way to clean a bathtub is really just like kind of any cleaner, but this is either the CLR Brilliant Bath Cleaner or I'm out of it right now, but the Dawn Power Wash Spray works incredible. And then I just use any broom. I did find this one from TJ Maxx recently. Anyway, all we're gonna do is just wet the bathtub down, spray the cleaner in it, and then you just scrub it with the broom. You can literally get one from Dollar Tree and it, it will save your back. If you have not done this, you will thank me later. Trust me, it's amazing. And the bristles really just get up any of the mess on there. You may have to scrub if there's like a certain area that you know really is rough. For the most part, you just need to use the broom and you'll be good to go. going to deep clean my shower not like a crazy crazy deep clean where I'm pulling every single thing out and getting in like every tiny little nook and cranny but we are going to clean like especially the bottom area just that kind of gets a little like that soap mildew and all that stuff so I am using the Zep grout cleaner and brightener I've used this all over and it works incredibly so I'm just going to clear like the floor area and spray this on let it sit for just a couple minutes and then you will see the after I'll show you the after once we're done it'll be totally clean and amazing this stuff is like magic So while that's sitting for a second, just to start working, I'm gonna show you the two things I'm gonna use. So one, I am gonna use my broom, my cleaning broom. I am going to use this, it's like the OXO tile scrubber. I don't remember exactly what it's called. These are nice because you can really get in like all those nooks and crannies, but it is on a, an extendable stick. So you don't have to, again, like be down on your hands and knees, scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing to get it clean. Can't tell what's wrong or right. Should I go without saying goodbye? All I know is I need to be somewhere else to set me free. I don't know what to do now. Need to figure it out, but I don't know how. I hope the wind will carry me and take. 
take me away to where I should be. putting on my knee pads because I'm gonna be down here for a minute scrubbing my toilet so the other night I was up late working on a video and I kept seeing Benji our orange cat in like our guest room and he kept batting at something on the floor so I was like it could be nothing but we're getting you know closer to the summer when scorpions come out and so I was like well I'm gonna go over and make sure there's no scorpions anyway so I was walking around with the black light looking for scorpions there were none I went into our bathroom looked with the black light in our bathroom. It was really disgusting. I have to get in here and like, not just like regular clean the toilet, but like crazy deep clean everything in here. So we are gonna do that today and then I'll actually black light later tonight and show you the results of like, if we got everything, but I'm gonna work my best to get everything. That's why I have these babies on and these on so that we can get this super, super clean. So this one is a bathroom cleaner. So I'm gonna try using that. And then we just have a toilet bowl cleaner and then I'm also going to use these Dawn disinfecting wipes. And this is the fresh splash scent. And then I also have my steam shot so I can kind of steam some of the nastiness away too. So anyway, that's what we're going to be using in here and we are going to clean this toilet. scrubbed it and wiped it all down and did all the steam stuff and hopefully we will not see anything glowing in there any longer okay so now that we have everything nice and clean we are going to start decluttering everything so basically we have a few different sections we have our medicine cabinet kyle and i both have one of those we each have some drawers and <laughs> down here in the cabinets are like the hardest part, but I'm just going to take one section out at a time, declutter it, and then I'll go back in and organize everything. Real me to get it going, open me up, sweet talking like you mean it, but you're making it so complicated. The boys found this and Kyle put it in my medicine cabinet to scare me one day. So thanks for that, Kyle. Don't call me just cause you're lonely. Now, if you're noticing all the different things that I have in here, I used to get FabFitFun and honestly, I loved it, but I really haven't used a lot of the skincare that I got because it really was not organized, just kind of tossed either into my medicine cabinet or you'll see in a little bit, but it was tossed down in my lower vanity. And when things are not organized, you're just not likely to use them and utilize them properly. So I currently have my FabFitFun account paused, but I've been starting to slowly get back into face masks and kind of taking care of my skin a little bit better. So I hope to start that up again once I work through some of my current items and it will be so much nicer now that I'm getting them all organized. So I did declutter and like we'll throw away a few things that I'm either not going to use or that it's used a product. So I did still keep quite a bit in here but these are the things that I use every day. So down here I have like my everyday like face cream, deodorant, perfume, oils, things like that. This also is kind of everyday. So this is like, well, these are some under eye pads that I don't use, but I want to. So I'm putting them here so that I can use them. Then up here, we have some random things like teeth whitening and those little face shaver things and like the jade roller. And then up here is kind of sunless tanning. And then this is just extra. We did keep all the things that I use in there. And one thing that I really want to start using but everything else has been decluttered. Next, I'm actually going to move to Kyle's side because honestly, I'm gonna do my 
vanity area last. It's just a mess in there. So I want to get a little motivation, like boost going first. They keep on telling lies. That is how we stay alive. Mm. So you know that I don't mind about what is wrong and what is right. They keep Kyle actually uses most of the items in his mirror cabinet and drawers, but it really needed to be cleaned and reorganized. And then I went ahead and just decluttered a few things that were either out of date or things that he just no longer used because that's just life. Sometimes your needs and desires change. But side note, I do want to mention, I love these small baskets and bins for organizing drawers. I feel like drawers can be so useful, but they do have to be organized. And these you can just pick up at Walmart, any Dollar Tree pretty much. You can find them all over the place. They're very inexpensive and they will change your drawer functionality so much. My cleaning gloves I was looking for. That would have been handy like 10 minutes ago. They're disgusting. Okay, we'll declutter these. We'll get different ones. And not to worry, this is a clean plunger. The plunger that we keep under the sinks for like unclogging drains of any kind that are not toilet. So it's a good one. Anything that I'm keeping, I'm going to put it on the counter above whatever cabinet it was already in. And then when I go back to reorganize everything, then I will be able to like pull it down and know where it went and also be able to change where I want it to go. And because we're on Kyle's side, I also am going to have a pile over here for when he gets home, like what works, like what doesn't work, what do you not want to keep, things like that. We keep As I was getting up close with these cabinets, they just reminded me so much how badly I really need to come down here and actually paint them and give them a nice fresh look, which I will definitely be using Beyond Paint for that. We've used that stuff in several makeovers recently and I love that stuff so, so much. But anyway, I ended up finding that we had about equal parts of things that we got rid of. So about a third of the things that we got rid of were items that were empty containers or things that were out of date. So those went into the trash. And then another third ended up actually getting decluttered of just things that we didn't use. And the last third were items that we wanted to keep but did not belong and really just needed to go to a new home in a different part of the house. I feel like that's its own battle in itself is just making sure that everything, one, has a home and two, stays in its home. down in here but basically we have some plugs underneath the vanity that we added in when we were getting like all the lights put in the house so what you do is you just like screw this into the wall and then you can set all of your hair styling tools down here and then I have the plug down there and it'll be so nice I can have it right where I need it it'll be so nice so we'll do that today if we get around to it if not we'll do it tomorrow but we'll do it for sure like in this video
definitely in the it gets worse before it gets better phase where I have like everything all over our counters, all over the floor, all over that counter. Like I said, I've been wanting to do this for a while so I've kind of been slowly accumulating a couple things. This is something I found these acrylic drawers and they stack on each other so you can make them like however high or low you want. I found them on Amazon, but then I was looking on Walmart and I found them for like half the price. So anyway, I got two sets of those. So I have eight of those drawers. I also still have like some of my own, you know, things that I already had before. And then I did get some baskets from Home Goods slash TJ Maxx. Ours is combined here. That is like the best place that I've ever found really to get baskets. You can just usually find them for a lot cheaper than you can other places. So those are kind of like the new items that I got. And then like I said, I do have some other things that I've had for years. Some are just in the garage storing right now. So we'll kind of pull out whatever we need, but we'll just slowly start organizing this and then once I get it organized I think I'm gonna do it on the counter and then I'll start like putting things actually where they go I already know better 24k got nothing on me make you want it forever try to play a game but you don't play for keeps messing with a girl from the east side yeah shared this a lot whenever you are organizing or decorating or anything sometimes you get stuck and I'm feeling a little stuck on these and so I have what I want in there right now but I'm going to start like working through some other things that I know I want in certain areas or organize a certain way and then from there we can come back to that once I start to get more of a flow so I think this basket will work perfectly for our washcloths and I'm thinking one of these larger baskets will work great for like our regular towels, probably the bigger one. I will link this down below by the way because this is actually a hair towel and it's like by far the best one I've ever tried. One thing I wanted to mention is don't always think that you need to use rigid square containers. Now that is best if you're working in a really tiny space, but if you declutter enough and your space allows, it can be so fun to incorporate other shapes of organizers into a space like this oval basket, for example. This is definitely not going to be the best use of space. However, it's cute, it corrals all the items, and it actually gets me excited to pull out my hair masks because it looks so nice. Anytime that you can organize something in a container, it is going to stay nicer for longer. So I'm going to see if I can just use this old container that I have and put these in here. That way they're not like going to get shifted around as time goes on. And as a bonus, it ends up looking like actually more intentional and not just, you know, kind of set there. Now this was actually a pottery piece that I thrifted and totally not intended for organizing, but it worked in the space and how cute did it end up being. Also, this little glass I'm using to hold our hand sanitizers is just an old reused candle jar. So truly, whenever you're organizing a space, get creative with organizing, use what you have, and a lot of times you'll be surprised at what you don't have to buy or what you can make work in your space.
as you can tell it is a new day i had to run some errands i also had to order from walmart a couple jars just to like finish organizing some things like the shower steamers and epsom salt for the bath and things like that so we don't have like a ton to do like kind of some more of the fun stuff because i'm also going to make some labels i feel like labels make organization look so much nicer and also just be a lot more practical but it's already feeling well kind of kind of already feeling a lot better kind of kind of we're still really deep in it but it's gonna be all done today so these are the two jars that i got from walmart this one is just a half gallon one of those like anchor hockey and i'm sure you guys have seen them and this is the thing that's going to make it so it's actually easy to use so maybe i'll end up using this one for the epsom salt and then this one can have like the shower steamers and things like that in there like how this says it's a one cup does that seem like crazy huge for a one cup that seems like so massive i don't know that's what it says it's, oh it says it on here this one's a quarter cup i don't know i think their measurements look a little off but whatever so this is just like your basic epsom salt and what i do like to do is actually add in some essential oils just so you have that nice scent and if you haven't used epsom salt before it's perfect to like add into bath it's detoxifying you just sprinkle it in it kind of dissolves and it's faster. So to this Epsom salt, I am just adding some essential oils to make and scent my own bath salts. And then as I mentioned, I am just adding in some shower steamers into this jar, making them really nice and inviting looking. And that's actually what I really wanted to do with this whole left cabinet. I wanted it to be, of course, very functional, but also look inviting so that it's easy to grab whatever bath items we want to use. And we're more encouraged to open it up and grab things out because of how nice it looks. And I think in the end, that's exactly what we accomplished here. organized in here for the most part is these last few drawers I have like the worst cracks on my heels and so I'm always like trying to do things to help those so I have some different tools that I use for that so now on this side we have like face like these are masks enzyme peels and face washes and scrubs and then this is hair items and then these are literally all for feet so this is like foot creams foot mask these sock things that have like jelly on the inside so you can put lotion on that doesn't you know seep into your sock this is like the callus cream and things like that to help soften your feet so you can do that here's the pumice stones and that tool and then gloves because you're not supposed to touch the callus cream on like your soft skin it's only really supposed to go on the calluses and there we go I don't know why, but it is so satisfying to me to cut labels with my Cricut machine and then weeding them is also so satisfying to do and watch. But I love adding labels in areas that have small scale and detailed organization, just like we're doing right here with these small little acrylic containers. That way it's easy to immediately find what you're looking for and it also makes it easier to maintain that organization because you know where everything should go. I realize they're all your friends. Is this who 
think I'm losing it. What do I do? Every time you come in there. Okay, now we're going to tackle this area under here. Here's my makeup case. I probably will keep it under here just because it's really convenient. This is my travel case. And these are the bags of travel items like earrings or like extra contacts. Lots of extra contacts because I couldn't find this or I like didn't know where it went when I was packing the last few times. So I just put them in like Ziploc bags and then I left them in there to be convenient and then I forgot I had more. So I actually love this travel bag, but I'm gonna put it in my closet where it actually goes and I'll empty those out. So now what we're doing though is going to install this. This was just on Amazon, but it's gonna be really cool because you'll be able, you're able to like put different things. You just kind of store them in there and then I can just plug them in down under here and I don't have to store them under there and they're also so easy to put away that I'm not going to Fingers crossed, leave them on my counter. I never got it, why'd you have to go? I guess this world's too slow for you. I think this beauty in the gray, the cold, but you just want the gold. And there's no way I can beat it, cause I got no chance, no chance. I am so thankful that Kyle is always so willing to help me on my random projects big or little. You guys know he's always a good sport with everything, but seriously, this organization piece has been a game changer. I went from leaving my brush and hair tools on the counter more often than not to not leaving them on the counter a single time ever since installing this. It's just made it so easy and convenient to put it all away. All right, we are finally down to the tiny details. So I found this elephant ear plant from our local grocery store. We stopped by there the other night and I thought this is so pretty. It is live, but I feel like I can keep it alive. We'll see. <laughs> but how pretty is that? I thought that would look so gorgeous in the corner by the bathtub. And then I also want to just refill a few things like the Q-tips and some mouthwash. Several years ago, my parents had changed out their trash can in the bathroom for like a larger trash can. Cause I feel like everybody always goes for these small ones, which I totally get but I feel like they just fill up quickly. We found this guy at Home Goods. It's definitely not like a full size, full size trash can or anything, but it looks really cute. And I just feel like it's going to look nicer and also just fit our needs better. And then literally the only thing we have left is to tackle these floors. They do need tackled, but I'm just gonna use my Roborock Rock Dyad Pro, knock those out really quick, and then I'll show you where we landed with everything. Here I'm just using my Roborock Dyad Pro and I know a lot of you guys have been waiting to find this back in stock because they keep selling out but as of now while I'm recording this they are officially back in stock so I will be linking them down below. If you are interested in the Roborock Dyad you guys will absolutely not regret that decision. It's such a game changer when it comes to cleaning your floors. I absolutely love it. Oh my gosh, you guys, everything is so beautiful and feels so clean now, but it's also decluttered. So we only have just what we want and just what we use. And every drawer and cabinet is beautifully organized. It just feels like a huge weight has been lifted and it's definitely a space that we can enjoy coming into now instead of feeling stressed and wanting to get out of here as soon as possible. I absolutely love when function meets aesthetics. So everything looks nice, 
but it's also not just looks. It's all about that functionality that we've added into the space by minimizing the things that we have and organizing as best we could the things that we're keeping. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I am planning to repaint all of these cabinets to something a little brighter and a little bit more modern. Like I said, I'm going to be using Beyond Paint. I love that stuff. And I'm thinking we might just end up keeping all of our bathroom cabinets the same color. So we might use the color Pebble and it's just like a really pretty taupe color. It's going to totally elevate this bathroom and make the cabinets match kind of the rest of the look and I cannot wait. I'm sure I'll share that in an upcoming house projects video with you guys. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And if you're looking for some more motivation, I'm going to link this video just for you on the right side of the screen. I actually don't think that you've seen this one and you are going to love it. I hope you have an incredible day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. It is very rainy outside, very dark and like dreary, just one of those gloomy days. And Kyle's actually out running errands with the boys today. So I figured this is the perfect opportunity to get some deep cleaning done around the house. It's kind of spring weather here. We're kind of like a little bit mixed, but we are getting into our spring cleaning. I did do some deep cleaning a few weeks ago, so I got a little jump on spring cleaning, but today we are going to dive even further into it. And we're going to be kind of spring cleaning all around the house, going upstairs, getting it all done. So I figured I would take you guys along with me. We have a ton to get done and I'm hoping to get as much done as I can before everyone gets home. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I wanna hear you say yeah. Like I said, it was just such a dreary day, but I feel like those dreary days are best if you can do one of two things, either be very productive, get things done inside of the house, or lounge around and do absolutely nothing. Either one of those things you can sign me up for on a rainy day. But anyway, it's been like a weird spring and winter. We've definitely felt a lot cooler lately and we have gotten so much rain. Like it's been insane. I feel like Arizona is always in a drought. And this year the mountains are green. Like we have a wash kind of by our house where it's usually just rock and gravel and, you know, pretty brown, <laughs> a lot of dried up things. And this year it is literally just looking green and it's so lush back there it's just wild to see here in Arizona but anyway I was showing you my snowboard because I have not been snowboarding since Kyle and I were dating so that was like 14 15 years ago and we decided for spring break this year we were going to go snowboarding and take the boys skiing for the first time for them and you know the first time in over a decade for Kyle and I you could definitely tell that it has been forever since I've been on a snowboard and I could tell I was just not a teenager anymore on that mountain. But even though I was very out of practice with that, it was a lot of fun just to get up in the mountains. And I feel like that's the only time that I really enjoy the cold is when it's very intentional. Like you're on a mountain, you know you're gonna be freezing and then it's like, it doesn't really bother me. But I was super excited to come back down to the Phoenix area and come back to, you know, a little bit more warm weather than a snowy mountain. But let me know in the comments if you have ever tried snowboarding or skiing. And if you have, tell me if you've ever crashed the first time I tried snowboarding, Kyle taught me and I actually got very overly confident and I was going down the mountain really fast and then I face planted and literally broke my brother's goggles with my head. I have no clue how I got down the mountain, like I have no memory of that, but I did have a black eye and now looking back I'm pretty sure I probably had a concussion, but I survived. 
Anyway, apparently I am feeling very chatty today. You guys will have to let me know if you like those little story times or if you want me to just, you know, stick to talking about cleaning and tips and things like that. So cleaning this fan is something that obviously does not get done all the time. I clean it at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, but a lot of things that are just out of sight are out of mind. Like that's a saying for a reason. So this was very overdue, but I just wanted to clear things up down below so that all the dust that I knew was going to be coming down wouldn't be falling on anything that I couldn't clean up easily. And also, yes, my first duster I tried totally fell apart when I was up there. I could feel it was a little bit loose when I was starting to use it, but I went along with it anyway, and sure enough, it like broke partway through. So I used a different one that I had, and that one worked really good. All right, this little tool right here has become my little obsession lately. I feel like you always go in these little obsessions and this has been mine. So I have been finding things around our house that have been pilling, whether it's the couch or even clothing, of course, these pillow covers. And these pillow covers were one of the worst because we've had them on for probably close to a year now. But this fabric shaver works so, so well and it ends up looking so much better and making it feel nice and soft and smooth. So I will link it down below. I was actually talking to my mom about doing this and she said she had picked one up from TJ Maxx or something and she was like you have to send me the link to yours because hers apparently does not work very well and this one I can tell you works very very great so if you need one definitely check it out I'm sure once you get it you'll be going around your house shaving all the fabrics making it all feel brand new All these things that I'm picking up off the floor and on the table were pretty much things that were left out in our backyard. I feel like there are always clothes and so, 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 so many socks left outside all the time, especially because we have the trampoline out there and the boys get home from school, take off their shoes, take off their socks, and it's pretty much inevitable that it just all gets left outside. So a couple times a week, we'll have them go out and like clear out the backyard. And sometimes they make it to where they go. Other times, you know, we're lucky to get it inside. And then you're just kind of left with a pile of outdoor things. But anyway, that's just the little random backstory of why there was like piles of socks and clothes by the back door. Searching all day long, try to be the perfect one. Now, even though the kitchen does take a lot of time and a lot of, you know, really that's it. It just takes a lot of time to keep it clean and maintain it. The kitchen is always my go-to starter chore. It's my domino chore, as I've called it for years. I don't think that's an official term, but you know, here at my house, it definitely is. And what I mean by domino chore is it's the chore that when you're feeling unmotivated, you can go ahead and start on that chore and it just kind of is a domino. It basically it gives you that boost of motivation and before you know it, you're cleaning your whole space, you're getting your whole to-do list done, and for me, that definitely is my kitchen. Let me know in the comments what your domino chore is, and also let me know if your domino chore has ever changed. Like maybe it used to be your kitchen, and now it's your laundry, or now it's your bathroom, or you know, whatever. So last week we actually went countertop hunting in town here in Phoenix 
and we found several that we really, really loved. And we did vlog that, so go ahead and check out our vlog channel if you wanna see some of the behind the scenes of our upcoming kitchen renovation. But anyway, one of the things that we actually need to figure out next is going to be what kind of sink we want. Now, I definitely know that I want a single basin sink. We've put that into our last two houses, and I have seriously missed it in this house. So I know I'm going to be doing a single basin sink, but when I told our countertop guy that, he was like, okay, what kind of single basin sink? And I was like, um, I didn't really know there was like a whole lot to choose from other than like an apron sink, which I don't want an apron sink. I just want a regular, you know, sink. But if you guys have any suggestions on that, like basically there are some that have rounded edges. There are some that are like super squared off. There's like regular stainless steel ones, which that's what I was thinking to go with, but they also have black ones. They also have prepping sinks where they kind of have that ridge where you can add like colanders and things like that. They just have so many different options. So let me know all your sink thoughts and suggestions down below. planning to go outside. I don't know if you can see how rainy and wet it is, but I was planning to go outside and clean like our patio area, spray that all off. It is very wet. I was also planning on trying to deep clean one of our rugs outside, out front, like in our driveway. Again, raining, so that's not gonna work today, but I do have a different rug that we're going to swap out in our closet. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. I'll show you the new rug that we got. And then I think I wrote, I always have to write down my list otherwise I will forget like all my plans of like what I want to get done today so then I think after that we're actually going to head upstairs and start deep cleaning some things upstairs upstairs is the area that I totally just neglect so hard <laughs> kind of topical clean like we vacuum but we don't get really into all the deep cleaning up there so we definitely need to get all that done but let's go into my closet and change out that rug in there I hope it's everything that I think it's gonna be but we'll see among the flowers we just let the days pass okay so this is the rug that we are going to be changing out this is just one that we had in our old house in utah and so we just put it in here but we're not really you know in love with how it fits so i ended up ordering a circle rub rug i think it was like 45 dollars on amazon or something i'm really excited to put it up so let's pull this one out when we were younger we used to sit on the grass Among the flowers We just let the days pass by Did you see how dusty it was under that rug? I have definitely slow vacuumed in our closet and I've slow vacuumed that rug a lot of times, but I don't think I've actually pulled it up completely to vacuum or mop underneath it ever since moving in. So there's just, you know, another real life moment. We're not perfect here, but we're doing our best. But I did want to take this opportunity after we pulled up the rug to go ahead and pull out my Roborock diet and get it all nice and clean. We didn't mind sitting out in the cold. It was impossible to make us embarrassed. We were free. Do you remember stealing smokes from your parents? Sometimes we got a bit out of control. When they found out we ran from home just to scare them, we were since it's a circle rug it's definitely gonna have a little bit of a hard time like getting all those edges to lay soft and lay flat but I love how this looks I feel like it makes it feel more open in here so for now I'm just kind of setting things along the edge and we'll let this kind of rest but I'll show you guys what it looks like once it kind of relaxes a little bit when we were 17 Now, when I was putting away my Roborock dyad, I saw the messy floors in the kitchen and dining room area and decided to go ahead and tackle those on my way back to the charging station. I feel like cleaning can a lot of times be like if you give a mouse a cookie. That's why I absolutely have to have a list and stick to that because otherwise I will just be all over the place and not finishing all the things that I really need to get done. 
But anyway, I did want to also mention this Roborock Diet Pro is finally back in stock. They have been out of stock for months, pretty much since I got it earlier in the year. And this last week, they finally came back in stock. So I will have that link down below for you guys. And I also went ahead and added it to my Amazon favorites, which is always in the description box. You can find it easily. Stay up all night singing songs on the terrace. We didn't mind sitting out in the cold. It was impossible to make us embarrassed. We were free. Do you remember stealing smokes from your parents? Sometimes we got a bit out of control. When they found out we were up in our theater room area this room gets used and abused like so much and we actually still have a bunch of the tools from when we redid our bathroom you remember the lime green one that is no longer lime green so we still have a bunch of tools that have just been kind of shoved in the corner and kind of forgotten like you know after you have a mess and it's been there for a while, you just don't see it anymore. That's kind of how it's been. So we are going to remedy that situation, get it nice and tidy in here, and then I'm actually going to deep clean in here. It's been forever since I've like truly deep cleaned, like deep clean the sofa, deep clean the floor. I was actually planning to do it last spring cleaning, and then life got really messy, and we didn't do it last year. So it's been a long time since I've been up here deep cleaning, clearly, it needs a little extra love. I'm gonna start by tidying everything up, slow vacuuming the floors, and then we will start carpet cleaning. Look at everybody staring for days. All they see is just a young, pretty face. But I'm trying to get to know you much better. But there's something you're trying to hide There's something you're keeping inside inside. But I'm trying to get to know you much better No matter how much time it takes Let me know what is your messiest space in your home. I feel like now our loft area up here that we finished a few months ago that will kind of give this room a run for its money now on being the messiest space in our house but even with how much the kitchen gets used this space is just upstairs it has a door that you can close when you have company over and it's meant for lounging and hanging out so it does have a lot going against it but it's one of those spaces that because it does get so far gone it feels so incredibly good to come in here give it some love and get it really nice and clean there's nothing like you and me together And your eyes have been so hard to forget But there's something you're trying to hide There's something you're keeping inside inside. But I'm trying to get to know you much better It don't matter how much Um, yes, I am stepping on the couch cushion Specifically like the top area that's kind of more of a pillow it is not glamorous, but this works if you have cushions on your couch that are kind of losing shape, if they need to be fluffed up a little bit. I don't remember where I learned this. I feel like actually one of you guys might have told me years ago, so I've been doing this for years and years. But if you need to fluff up your cushions, try stepping all over them. And I don't know, you know, the science behind it, but it fluffs up all of the fluff inside your couch and it does work really, really well to make it look and feel more comfy. Now, I'm not going to point fingers. However, I will say there is one cushion on the couch where a specific person always likes to sit and this person likes to kind of jump onto the couch and almost sit on top of the backs. So I feel like that's why one of these cushions looks worse than the other. It kind of drives me nuts, but since I can fluff up the cushions fairly easily, I don't give him too hard of a time about this.
I wanted to talk for just a minute about this lightweight carpet cleaner. So we got this last year and it's under $100, which I feel like is such a great deal for a carpet cleaner that cleans your carpets very well. But one thing that we don't love about it is that you do have to empty it and refill it fairly often. And I think that's just because it is like a lightweight tool. So it's not super heavy or anything. However, it's amazing how well it does work. So to us, that's definitely a good payoff. Like you have something that's very affordable, very lightweight and easy to use, but you have to change out the water and empty it out a little bit more often. Oh, the other thing that I did want to mention about this carpet cleaner is it actually does not come with attachments, which is totally fine for us because we do have like that little green machine that has great attachments. But for cleaning your floors and even the way we clean our cushions, we just literally run it over top of the cushions. We don't use attachments really anyway. So this does work good, but definitely something to know is that it doesn't come with any attachments. Also so random, but I just was cracking up at like that little carpet fiber that was just hanging on for dear life in the front of that machine. Next, I pulled out our little green machine. It's really not so green because this is like the upgraded version. Our old one got a crack in it after having it for years and years and we got this new one. It's purple, so not really the little green machine anymore, but that's basically what it is. And I was just using that to kind of spot treat some of the stains and areas issues, I guess, that we have on our ottoman and it worked really, really well. and e-cloths to the rescue once again. I'm just using the general purpose cloth to wipe down all of those many fingerprints. And then I'm using the glass and polishing cloth to literally polish it dry and clean and leaving no streaks left behind. If you do not have these in your cleaning arsenal, these are definitely a must have when it comes to cleaning for me and they have been for years. All right, we are getting this room looking nice and clean. It's feeling so fresh and clean and it's definitely worlds above where we started about an hour ago. But stay tuned because next we are going to be heading outside and getting our back patio area that's, you know, again, gotten away from us. We are going to be tackling that and getting it really nice and clean and perfectly ready for spring and summer.
finally we have a sunny day. It is very bright out today, which is perfect because we are going to be deep cleaning our patio area. So we have our table, we have like a little sitting living space out here and we are going to be pulling everything out. Kyle is home today, so we are just going to be like working on it as a team. We're going to scrub everything down, power wash everything, and get it all looking nice and ready for summertime. We'll be out here a lot. Like I mentioned before, it's been a little bit of a colder winter here, and so we haven't spent as much time hanging out out here, but now that the weather is starting to warm up a little bit, we're gonna be out here all the time. So we definitely need to kind of get this space in shape, and we are going to go ahead and get started with that right now. I have neglected this guy, so we need to trim him up a little bit, but I'm happy to say he is still surviving. Maybe not thriving, but we're gonna fix that today. <laughs> Give him some extra love. Let me know, do you do spring cleaning alone or do you have some help? Do you ever hire anyone to help? Oh my gosh, I'm just thinking that would be so awesome to actually hire someone to come spring clean your house every year. Uh, that would be a dream, but it is good when you do it yourself because then you do have that sense of accomplishment. Like I did this, I did all these things and I got it done myself. Maybe one year I'll try to do that. That would be super nice. But I also feel like with my personality, I would probably be so nervous about having them deep clean our house that I would end up pre-cleaning it before they got here and it would just kind of be pointless. But anyway, that's neither here nor there, just randomness. All right, we have everything all taken out of our little patio area except for this table because we really don't need to power wash that or anything. I'm just gonna wipe that down in just a few minutes. We also left the fireplace because one, it's very heavy, and also because we had cut a hole, like a little slit in the rug down below, and so it's all kind of like connected because we have the hose to the propane going beneath the rug. So we are just going to leave that as it is, and then we're going to pressure wash the rug and get that all clean as well. But it almost does look better because it's all cleared off. So we'll get this all power washed and then put everything back on. Fired all of the bullets. Yeah, you shot me through the heart. Casting dice and roulettes. The game was set right from the start. I don't want to go. I don't want to know. I don't want it in The easiest way if you want to soak down a big space like this, this is called a soap cannon. You can get them on Amazon for, I don't know, what are they, 12, 15 bucks? They're not that expensive. I use car soap to fill it up because it suds really well. And then when you rinse it, it also rinses off easy. You can use any kind of soap you want. And it's meant to just go into the grass or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, and it's environmentally friendly. Supposedly, a car soap it can go down the drain, and the grass won't hurt anything. It's really easy to use. You just attach it to the end of your wand, and then you can adjust how much soap here and how big of a spray you want here. And it only take us maybe 45 seconds to spray this entire thing with suds. And then when you're done, you just pop it off. Good to go. Use it for next time. So here I was just using water. There was no soap cannon added to this yet. So I have no idea why it looks so soapy here, but we just wanted to wet down the patio and get it ready for all the soap. And I'm also just kind of starting to scrub out the rug and you can see all of Emma's dog hair getting sprayed up. This is why you've got to have a power washer and power wash your outdoor areas. It does so much more than you can get with anything else. That's from one swipe with the broom. Yeah, Dog and we hair. already sprayed a ton off too. Yeah. Gross.
Once Kyle got the patio, I'll spray it down with soap and scrub down with our little broom scrubber thing. I went in and power washed as much of the soap as I possibly could out of it. And seriously, power washing just makes such a difference. We do this every single year and it just makes all of your outdoor furniture and the ground and everything feel brand new. And then once we got the patio area all power washed, Kyle just moved on to the furniture. Now for this, we did not use any soap. We just pressure washed with water. But again, this just shows how powerful the pressure washers are. They work so well, even with just water. Let me know in the comments if you pressure wash at your house too. For us, it's a must. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell in here, but there's like some little stains on this fabric, which is just gonna happen because it's like a light fabric, but it isn't coming clean easily with just the pressure washer. So we're gonna use some Dr. Bronner's, just the Castile soap. Like you can literally shower with it. You can use it in your laundry. You can wash your pets with it. Like it basically works for anything. So I'm just gonna squirt a little bit on here and hopefully that'll help a little bit. This right here is actually an old dog bed. We have had this for years and years and it had just gotten so dirty over the years that we were worried it would be too far gone. But the pressure washer made very quick work of it. As you can see, it worked super well and now it's just drying and then we can bring it back inside and Emma will be so excited to have another bed upstairs. While we're waiting for the patio area to kind of finish drying off before we put everything back on, Kyle is just gonna actually spray down some of our bushes back here because they were so pretty. I don't know if it was like a year ago, last year maybe, and this winter just was yeah. pretty rough on them. And then the same thing like back by the pool, those were just like so lush and this winter was just so hard. So he's gonna spray some miracle Grow on them and hopefully in you know, hopefully a few weeks miracle. or a month, yeah. We need a miracle for these. Put the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat, yeah. I was ruled out with no bail out on my own, all alone, left to bleed out. But I rose up from the ground. So it's definitely going to take us a little bit of time to figure out if this plant fertilizer actually worked, but. Kyle said the next day there were actually a ton of buds on the trees, so it could just be spring working or maybe it's the plant fertilizer. We'll just have to see. Um, like, but like the pink over on the on the side. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm doing. I'm sitting in the back. Yeah. Not even like that. Of course, I did it wrong. <laughs> Come on, Kyle. You know how to do this.
finally, I'm just wiping things down and I'm using the Method Wood Cleaner with a microfiber cloth. And this combo works super great, especially outdoors where you might have a lot of pollen or you might have, you know, like us, a ton of dirt because we live in the desert. And then once everything was all nice and wiped off, I just started watering my plants and fertilizing them and trying to give them new life. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope you enjoyed the spring cleaning video. I'm probably gonna have one more spring cleaning video come out this year because we need to tackle our boys' rooms and some more areas upstairs, even our bedroom. So some of the areas that we still haven't quite got to, I need to deep clean those. So stay tuned for that. And I also wanted to let you know, next week I'm going to be having a spring homemaking video that is going to have a ton of new recipes that I've never shared with you guys before. So you definitely do not want to miss out on that. And if you are needing some more cleaning motivation, I'm going to link this video on the right side of the screen. Definitely check it out and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We woke up this morning, the sun was shining, kind of giving that summer heat. And now we have the windows open, it's beautiful outside, and we're just welcoming it in. Like spring is, I think, officially here. Fingers crossed, it doesn't go away again. But we have a ton to do. I want to clean everything up in here, get a nice, clean slate going then I'm actually gonna be jumping into our pantry I want to kind of reorganize that we did do a full pantry makeover when we first moved in like within a month or two of moving in and that has held up really well but life happens and it's kind of gotten a little in disarray so we are going to be reorganizing that in there a little bit and then I also have some amazing recipes you guys do not want to miss out on oh and I'm also going to be sharing a new menu board that I got our menu board situation has been kind of hit or miss since moving in so enough chatting let's get to it I want to hear you say it. Mistakes on us, but do they really don't us? Your tongue can be sharp, cut me close to the heart. But we can master the art, and the thing is that these scars. So, as you can see, I'm just starting out in our living room, kind of tidying things up. And if you saw my recent spring cleaning video, I did get started officially on spring cleaning. And prior to that, I actually shared like a deep cleaning video where I deep cleaned our kitchen and some other, you know, very neglected areas in our home. And honestly, I love spring cleaning. Well, I like love hate spring cleaning. I kind of hate the act of doing it. However, the benefit of it feels so good. Now a little different subject, but I am totally an advocate for homemaking and just reminding yourself that homemaking is something that truly, truly matters. So if you are here today and not feeling motivated or if you're here feeling less than, underappreciated, whatever the case may be, know that you are not alone and just remind yourself that you are doing something that really does matter. Now I am going to give you guys a challenge. I challenge you to go ahead and get up right now this minute, stand up, 
go clean something, you can leave this video on and just clean right along with me for a few moments. And I will kind of chat with you on and off throughout this video. And then a little bit later on, once we get into the recipes, you can sit down, hang out with me, take a load off and just rest and relax for a little bit. Enjoy some delicious recipes that I'll be sharing with you. And if you decide to take me up on this challenge today and clean right now, go ahead and leave a comment before you start. Let me know what you are going to tackle and then let me know once you finish up. No matter what kind of day you're having, remind yourself that you are amazing. Everything is always more fun to do with a friend. Friend. and today you've got me right by your side cheering you on and keeping you company and we can do this together I feel like the dishes actually look a lot worse than how they truly are. So this is all dirty, these are dirty, but Kyle washed these last night when I was playing with the boys. And so these are all clean, thank goodness. So this is kind of random, but recently I got a comment asking about our razor or side-by-side, -side, whatever you call them. Um, basically, over on our vlog channel, we had shared a little tidbit that our razor had been stolen or that we didn't have our razor anymore, something like that. And we were planning on doing like a full update to you guys over on the vlog channel and you know, life happened and we got busy and we kind of forgot to let you guys know and update you on that. So I figured I would share just a short little story time with you guys on our razor and let you know exactly what happened. So we are actually gonna go back to Christmas morning. I think it was like seven in the morning. We were all sitting in the living room as a family, watching the boys open their gifts, things like that. Then we hung out for a while. I feel like we always take naps on Christmas morning. It's just a very lazy day in our house typically. And then later on in the day, we actually went out for a family bike ride. And when we got back, we realized, wait, where is our razor? Now, typically our razor is parked in the garage, but we had moved it out a night before to store something in the garage for a friend. And once we realized it wasn't in the driveway where we had left it, we immediately went to our security camera that we have on the front of our house and we saw a tow truck up to our house at like 7.01 or 7.06 or something in the morning and within 15 seconds they had loaded up our razor and pulled away out of our driveway with taking our razor right along with them. It was the weirdest, strangest thing and Kyle was immediately like, oh my gosh, did something happen? Was there confusion? Like did it just get repossessed? So then he goes and looks online, makes sure all the payments are made and everything so it was not repossessed. Then he called the police to see if there was any kind of like repossession order on it and they said there was nothing. 
So then we went ahead and reported it as stolen. And of course, the next day he did all the due diligence stuff. Like he called the company that we were paying off the razor to and they said that everything was all good on there and like there was no accidental repossession, anything like that. So it truly was stolen. But it was just the most wild thing because it literally happened Christmas morning. It was still like not even super bright outside. Everyone was just busy with Christmas, not paying attention to what was going on outside their homes. All that to say our razor was stolen right out from under us with a tow truck right on Christmas day. Like it was just the most bizarre thing. So this is my very favorite essential oil. I actually am all out of these ones, so I need to go grab one from over by my diffuser. But these are my favorite because they are very affordable and they're super high quality. And also I did want to note, I do get some comments sometimes just letting me know that essential oils can be dangerous for pets. And I have heard this. I actually found this out after we had been using them for years and years and had never had any issues. But once I found out about that, I asked our vet years ago about it and seeing kind of what they thought about it. And he ended up telling us that diffusing oils or using them in this way like isn't really a big deal for the pets. Really it's just keeping the undiluted oils out of reach for them. But definitely that's something that's like a personal decision. And also I felt a lot more comfortable knowing what my vet had told us. These are some of the little countertop samples that we got when we were out the other day. I don't think we're going with any of these, but it's super exciting that the kitchen renovation is becoming very, very real. board i love it i think it's so cute i love the size i do love that it's dry erase however it feels like it's dry erase but when you try to erase something like it does not erase sometimes i can get a magic eraser to erase it but even that is kind of a struggle so a while back i came up with this new system and basically i just used a label maker to write different dinner ideas and recipes and things like that on here so that we can actually pull it out and stick it on and that did work actually for a really long time but I'm always like making new recipes and especially with the way I'm eating it's like things change I stop eating this I start eating that and so this is not as easy for that but I'm just going to try something different and you'll still keep this around for different ideas if it's like oh what should we make tonight Oh, we'll have loaded potato soup or, you know, whatever, just to give us different ideas. But this mini board is not working for us. So I did get this one. It's an acrylic material, so it is dry erase. It also comes in black, it comes in clear, and it comes in this white color. And then all of them have like the gold lettering on it. So it has the menu. It also has a little grocery list, which is perfect. And then any kind of notes that we might need. So. I'm super excited about this. I think it's going to be awesome and work really great. And then once we get this up, we'll go ahead and work on the pantry. This is why I use the Velcro command strips because it just pops off. And then for these, you do want to make sure you pull them to the side and it's going to basically ruin the command strip, but it doesn't damage your wall at all. Because this has like a thick backing to it back here to make it elevated off the wall, I can't just use my normal command strips, but instead they did break, give you these, they're like little raised rectangle 
box things. So I'm just going to end up putting them on the back of this and then we'll put these in and these will look like it's holding it up but really it's just being stuck on the wall. And then this also does come with some different colored markers, the dry erase markers. So I'm excited. <laughs> Deep in the afterlight What you watching the colors rise Summer twilight skies on fire Never wishing I was somewhere else Held on to you like Loctite Getting through it when it hurt like hell Feels like the only thing we've done right It's a star, it's a light It's a signal fire It's the sound of your voice Cutting through the night It's a song, it's a noise this is gonna be so nice it's just wiping off so easily so my only bummer thing so far is that there's no great spot to put the pen but maybe i'll just see if i can buy like a little tray or a pen holder or something that i can stick on here but i love it play this out like it's forever ever ever yeah you and me together yeah there ain't nothing better yeah let's hold this like it's now or never ever ever yeah. all right next we are going to work on these cabinets so this is kind of like for like the majority is my kind of thing so like i have some gluten-free items in here i have things for smoothies randomness Clearly I haven't done anything with this and it's been driving me nuts. In here we mostly have like supplements or things like medicine things, but I actually don't like having them in here. It's just kind of where they've landed. You know how people have junk drawers? Well, we have like a junk slash home cabinet. So any randomness that we don't know what to put where, it goes in here. So I'm not really sure what we'll end up doing with all of this. It definitely needs to be organized and sorted through and kind of figured out and then once we are done with all that we are going to come in the pantry <laughs> like it's kind of held up but it's also kind of not so we're gonna reorganize that a little bit before we get into the recipes i'm holding my breath as i walk to your front door What we have down here so we have like some cleaning randomness these are batteries and this i think that's more like vacuum stuff this is all kind of kyle's stuff we have a bunch of tape we will keep these out because these are our scorpion black lights and some scorpion spray these are some furniture items i might just declutter some of these but i do want to keep probably like a bag of these and then we have like this is empty whatever this is empty Obviously a lot of things that are out of date and we'll probably end up getting rid of most of this random candy stuff. So that's what we have. Time to declutter and put these things where they go. All right, let me know in the comments who else is nosy like me and loves to see what other people have in their homes, especially in those hidden spaces like drawers and cabinets that you never really get to look in. I feel like that's kind of one of the fun aspects of YouTube. Like you couldn't just walk into someone's house and start opening up their cabinet doors and seeing what they have in there and how they organize and you know, all that kind of stuff. But here on YouTube, this is a weird world we live in and I personally share a lot of real life moments, so you guys know I'm sharing how it is. I'm sharing what's really behind those closed doors. If you guys are like me and like to be a little bit nosy, enjoy my cabinets guilt-free and just know we all got random stuff behind there. We all have junk cabinets. It's just life. So 
I am going to have to go through this and like reorganize it, but these are just different supplements that we have. I'm gonna bring this upstairs and then I'll decide like what things we're gonna keep, what things we'll get rid of, and also anything that's expired. And then these are things that are for sure expired. And then we also have some candles right here, random, but candles that we had made when Kyle's mom was visiting one time. Show of hands, who remembers this previously lime green bathroom? Oh my gosh, I love how this turned out and it is way better than it was before, but stay tuned for the house projects video next week. One of the house projects that we're tackling is actually our own bathroom. And then following that, like maybe one or two weeks, we'll be doing one of the boys' bathrooms. So stay tuned for all that stuff. love this bathroom so much. I can't wait to do the boys. Okay, now back downstairs. Now that I have everything laid out, I have these little jars that I want to use for coconut sugar, almond flour, the random like new kinds of flours and things that I have for AIP and paleo. And then everything else I'm going to put into containers or bins up here so that I have it nice and organized and it doesn't look like how it just did. And then I'm thinking in this cabinet, we'll actually put maybe some of the bread so we can get that off the counter and then maybe some baskets or something for overflow, things like that, because right now all the overflow just goes in here. Because just with how my eating has changed over time, like for a while I was doing a certain way, then I was doing AAP, then I was doing, you know, paleo, whatever. That's just kind of how it goes. So we need to sort this out, but I definitely need to first go through all of these like specialty items and get them kind of decanted into there. I'm gonna start with like some of the overflow items and snack items. So I did also get these bins. They were $6.99 from Home Goods or TJ Maxx. Ours is always combined here. And then I also have some like these up here that I'm gonna put up top to put like the extra part of the bag of coconut sugar. And then I'll just have the jars kind of down here. So let's start with that. This has become one of my favorite new brands that I found actually through our Hungry Root orders. I shared them in a previous video and I believe my link still works. You can go ahead and save some money. I will have that link down below for you guys, but it's awesome because they are like a grocery delivery service and they also offer meal planning and things like that. So it just makes life a little bit easier. And one of my favorite aspects about them is that you get to learn about new brands that you didn't know about that fit into your way of eating and lifestyle. And I'm so excited that my little snack cabinet has been a little bit more full lately thanks to them. Don't you love our powdered countertops after decanting all of those powders? I feel like it totally looks like it snowed inside, but I absolutely love decanting items into jars. It just makes it so much more, one, aesthetically pleasing, which is great, but also it makes it way easier and more motivating to use those items versus just having to get out the bag every time you want to use something. I feel 
I've been trying to kind of figure out like what's going to be best for the rest of these cabinets. So I think this cabinet is going to be a little mismatched, but we'll have bread down here. And then I'm probably going to have like some smoothie items on the middle shelf just because we have our blender right below. And then I think up here, I'm going to put all of our supplements. That way I can just pull the whole bin down and it won't be inconvenient like having the supplements up high. Isn't this a good life? Sitting on the front porch, sipping on the rocks, citrus in our beverages, citrus in our beverages, show only the good sides, always pretty smiles are covering our faces, you know it is all lies, you know it is all lies. So for me, a organized space truly, truly motivates me so much. If I'm in my kitchen, it really motivates me to cook a lot more and cook healthier. And actually recently I did a bathroom declutter and organize as well. And that has been amazing to really encourage me to actually start using more of my skincare and things like that. If you missed that video, I'll pop the thumbnail up here on the screen so you can find it on my channel. But seriously, an organized space is way more than just aesthetics. It actually makes things a lot more functional for your daily use. To me, like I said, it does motivate me to use those items a lot better and utilize the things that I have. And also a side note is it does save you money because then you know exactly what you have and where they're at so you know have to go buy anything new you can just use what you have and not waste anymore this is where we're at look at all the space just for moving the bread up and then i also moved our blender up i do use it often so i want to have it convenient right here but we have this whole cabinet clear now so my plan is to have like when we go to costco or things like that we can put excess in here then i can just pull this down easily and this is all empty. We have our air fryer over here in the corner since it's kind of bulky. Toaster that we use every morning for the boys. Here's all the bread. We have smoothie items and then supplements and then just like random extra bits up there. And here we have my caraway pots and pans. And then up here is like my cabinet. Obviously like people can get in here and have it as well but these are all like safe for me like they're gluten and dairy free and then up here we have just like some excess items like bigger snacks i guess then up top we have like excess so the things that went into these containers but i have like overflow is up there and then down here are just more individual snacks or smaller amount of snacks and then next we are going to start tackling this just get this kind of reorganized a little bit more Tell me. Why'd you have to go and drive me so crazy? Now I'm feeling lost without you and I just can't be Without you, baby, want you all night long Want you all night long Tell me So these right here are some of the individual snacks that we have for the kids for school. They are supposed to bring a snack every day and most of their teachers request the individual snacks. But one thing that I did want to mention about this is I really love having the snacks for the kids in these really shallow baskets. I actually got these from Home Goods and TJ Maxx whenever we redid our pantry when we first moved in. And I just love how functional and easy it makes to grab the snacks. And then as I'm kind of moving down to the bottom area of our pantry, I'm just going through everything, making sure that we're only keeping things that we use and that aren't expired. And then a lot of the items down here, I actually moved over to that open cabinet that we cleared out earlier and everything is just looking so much better and feeling a lot more functional. We have this side of the pantry all organized and looking nice. So I'm thinking I'm just going to start from the bottom up and kind of work my way through everything. <sighs> Should be fun. We run away. So let us up when we're low. Just chase 
I have mostly just like extras like when we have one in the fridge open I'll buy an extra to have out here so that if I'm making a recipe I just know I always have it on hand and so we have a lot of extra condiments so I think instead of keeping them up here I'm actually going to put them into one of the little bottom bins that way I can just kind of like shop from there and not have to take up like this prime real estate up here. We typically will buy in bulk or have backups. And I feel like while that can be convenient, it also is something that needs to be managed and maintained a little bit better. And so that's something that can kind of cause an issue in a pantry if you're not careful with it. But I am going to share a real life moment with you guys, just, you know, keeping it real. So I have a problem with saving things that I know we won't use but I don't wanna waste it. So I just keep it on our shelves saying, you know, maybe I'll use it, maybe we'll get around to it. And I wait until it's expired and then it's like, okay, I only have one option. Now it's expired so I can now get rid of it. But then I feel guilty because I'm wasting items and that's definitely something I really need to work on is just taking time to go through things and not feeling guilty about realizing we're not going to use it and I can donate it to a food bank or something. That way there's no guilt. You're actually helping people out and you're making your own space less cluttered. But just like anything, I'm going to try not to beat myself up over it. All we can do is just work to do a little bit better than we did the day before. It is a new day. You guys know how it goes. The kids got home, things got busy. We went to football practices, all that kind of stuff. So we are going to be doing all the cooking today and I have some amazing recipes for you guys. I might be kind of jumping back and forth between each recipe. However, all the recipes can be found over on my blog. I have that link down below. And then also with every single recipe before I start getting into it, I always have a recipe card just pop up here on the screen so that you can go ahead and screenshot that, print that off, whatever you wanna do. So we are going to start with some pancake mini muffins. Also, I'm making some peach cobbler overnight oats. Yes, it is even more delicious than it sounds, which it sounds incredible. So you guys have to try that one. Then we're also going to try making the Jennifer Aniston salad. I have not personally tried it, but I've heard a lot of things about it and I found a recipe online. So we are going to try that out together today. It sounds incredible. Then we're going to make two different dinner options. One we are having for dinner and one I'm making as like meal prep for the week. So one of those is going to be like an unstuffed pepper bowl dish thing. And basically it's like stuffed peppers, but without all the hassle and without all the work. So it's just very simple, very quick to throw together on a busy weeknight, which you guys know, I love those ones. And then we're also going to be making a buffalo chicken bowl. And then we are going to finish things off with a blueberry grunt. I have shared this recipe years and years ago, but it's just a family favorite of ours. So I'm going to share it again. We have a lot to get done, a lot of cooking to do. So let's get into it. So to start, we are going to come in our nicely new organized pantry that doesn't stress me out when I walk in here and we are actually just going to grab a pancake batter you can make pancake batter yourself this is just the Kodiak cakes that we get from Costco you can also use gluten-free ones but this is mostly for the kids so I'm just not doing the gluten-free option I'm doing this one so we're also going to grab some mini chocolate chips you do want to use mini, you don't have to use chocolate chips, you can also use blueberries or you know whatever add-ins you want, but we are going to use chocolate chips. And then we'll also grab some milk. We use either almond milk or rice milk, oat milk, coconut milk, things like that. I don't have any almond milk, that's usually my preference, but today we're gonna do oat milk. I do wanna add in one egg. I have made this without an egg and I've also made it with an egg and I do kind of like it with the egg, but if you don't have eggs, you totally don't have to add one. Alright, 
start by preheating our oven to 350 degrees and then I'm gonna grab a muffin tin. I actually have the silicone muffin tins and I really, really love them. They make it really easy to get out. You don't have to like scrape a knife around the edges or anything. These ones are just from Walmart, so I will link them down below. Okay, so in a medium or small mixing bowl, we are just going to add in one cup of pancake mix followed by one cup of milk, and then we're going to add in one egg. Then we're just going to whisk this up. You never wanna over whisk pancake batter, but just get it until it's nice and blended. Next, we're going to eyeball about half a cup of chocolate chips, but you can also add in berries or whatever. For this specific mix, we're gonna let it just sit for just a few minutes. And then while that's hanging out, we are just going to spray down our little cupcake tin. And then we will just start filling up each of the muffin tins. I just had a super exciting thought. What if this is the very last homemaking video that I ever do in this kitchen before we do, we have like our new kitchen. We're leveling the countertop, adding new countertops. We're gonna be painting in here. Like we're doing a lot of stuff and we've been wanting to do it ever since moving in. So I was super excited. Okay, next we are going to make those peach cobbler overnight oats. So we're headed back into the pantry. We're going to grab the oats. My base recipe for this is just half a cup of rolled oats mixed with half a cup of milk. Like my favorite one is almond milk and then whatever add-ins you want. So for this recipe, you're going to use rolled oats, some oat milk or almond milk, then sliced peaches. You can use fresh or frozen. I usually use frozen. Also, you're going to add in some maple syrup or brown sugar and then lots of cinnamon. And then I personally like to add in chia seeds, but that's definitely optional. So the containers that I like to use are just these little Pyrex ones, and I believe they're two cups, but they were great for overnight oats. So you typically will want to store these in the fridge for at least a couple hours, but I usually make them a day or two ahead of time and we'll just leave them in there overnight. And then you can just eat them cold or you can heat them up. I always eat them cold just cause I kind of like that and it's even easier, but this is perfect for like on the go breakfast. You can make this ahead of time. Like I said, make a bunch at a time. You can even just make them and like add in all the dry ingredients. And then when you're ready to have them the next morning, you just add in any fruit, the wet ingredients, and then they're good to go. Super, super quick and easy for like a quick and healthy morning breakfast, or even just a snack throughout the day. Definitely make this one. Okay, so for the Jennifer Aniston salad, you are going to need quinoa chicken stock. Last night, I actually went ahead and made this because you do want to make it ahead of time so that you can have it chilled, so it's not like a warm salad. So you're gonna need quinoa, chickpeas, an English cucumber, a red onion, fresh parsley, fresh mint, pistachios, and some feta cheese. Now, typically I am dairy free. However, I think I am gonna add the feta in here and we'll just see how it goes. And then for the dressing, it's just going to be some olive oil, fresh lemon juice, a little bit of honey just to add a touch of sweetness, and then salt and pepper to taste. So I love that it's just like simple, whole foods, very fresh ingredients. It sounds amazing, so let's put it together and we'll see how it goes. I'm sick and tired of emotions. They've never done me any good. Just told me up into this. I wish I knew how to call it quits. So a tip cutting your herbs is actually to take them in a bunch like this and then you just wanna roll them up into like a tight little ball kind of. It makes it so much easier to chop your herbs up easily. Okay, now into this medium mixing bowl, we are going to add in all of our prepped out ingredients. So we're gonna start with that quinoa that I made last night. Then we'll add in our garbanzo beans, followed by cucumbers we cut up 
the red onion, the fresh herbs, which is parsley and mint, and then we'll finally add in the chopped pistachios. I've always liked to be a stranger. Keep my distance from the crowd. Then we're going to add in one cup of feta cheese. Mix that up. So for the dressing, we're gonna do about, maybe about a quarter of a cup of lemon juice, a quarter cup of avocado oil or olive oil, just a little drizzle of honey and then salt and pepper to taste. And one tip with lemons, if you roll them, they actually will release a lot more juice a lot easier. Not a sound. That is so good. Oh my gosh, that's delicious. I actually like never use mint when I cook, but you can taste the mint. It's just like very subtle, but you can taste it. Oh, that's so good. All right, this is a good one. Skipping town, searching for no Ready or not, this might be our last chance. I just ate the rest of that extra quinoa salad that didn't fit in my food prep container for my lunch and oh my gosh, so good, that was super tasty. So we're gonna take these muffins now that they are all cold and I'm just gonna store them in here. I will say the one downside to these muffins is that if you put them in your fridge, they're fine for several days, like for probably like close to a week. If you keep them on your counter, it's like three days maybe. There's really not a ton of preservatives in them, preserving them on the counter like you would get in a lot of other things. So right, next we are going to make that unstuffed pepper bowl. It's super, super tasty and it comes together really, really quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and start grabbing all of the ingredients that we'll need for that and then we'll start cooking it. The first thing actually that we're gonna start with before I get all the rest of the ingredients out is cooking up some rice because we are going to use rice for both the unstuffed pepper bowl and also the buffalo chicken bowl. So we're just gonna use brown rice, but I am going to go ahead and start cooking that up in my rice cooker. By the way, if you don't have a rice cooker, it makes everything better <laughs> when you're cooking rice or steaming vegetables, it's just awesome. So we are going to easily cook up our rice and conveniently in the rice cooker, and then we'll get started on the actual recipe. No looking back. Okay, so for the unstuffed pepper bowl, you are going to need some ground turkey, a few bell peppers. Now these ones are pretty small, so I'm actually gonna use three, but if you have good size ones, you probably only need two of them. Then I'm also going to add in an onion, some garlic, you can use fresh garlic or minced garlic, a can of diced tomatoes, and then for your seasonings, you're going to use some cumin, some chili powder, some parsley, you can use fresh or dried typically, I don't have fresh on hand, so I just always go for dried. And then a little bit of cayenne pepper. And of course, you'll use the staples of olive oil, salt, and pepper. You can add some shredded cheese on it as well. I won't add it to mine, but I will add it to Kyle's and the boys. And then of course, you'll use some rice as well. You can use brown rice, white rice, cauliflower rice, whatever you like and whatever you have on hand. All right, we're going to start out by heating a little bit of oil in my pan, and then we are going to go ahead and add in the chopped onions and chopped bell peppers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get cutting those. Okay, how cool is that? You can just pop it right through. Once the peppers are getting nice and soft, you can transfer them to another bowl. However, 
I like one pot dishes, so I'm actually just gonna kind of like scoot everything off to the edge. And I'm also going to start adding in the turkey before this is like quite finished cooking. All right, now this is almost cooked. I'm going to go ahead and add in all the seasonings. And at this point, I'm also gonna add in the minced garlic. The unstuffed peppers dish is all made. So I'm just gonna kind of set that aside for now until the rice is done and then I'll show you what it looks like once it's plated and once it's all done. But like I said, we're just waiting on the rice. But now we can go ahead and start making that delicious buffalo chicken bowl. Ugh, my mouth literally waters when I think about buffalo sauce. It's so, so yummy. For the buffalo chicken bowls, we are going to use chicken breast, some buffalo sauce. This is just like a paleo one, but you can totally use like Frank's or whatever you want. We're gonna use that half onion that we had earlier. Also some black beans, and then we're gonna have green onions on that as well, kind of towards the end. Then to season, we're going to have paprika and cumin, of course, salt and pepper, some olive oil or avocado oil. Again, we're gonna have rice. And then again, you can add cheese if you want or you can omit that. I'm going to omit it for me. I'll add it for Kyle. So that is all we are going to be needing for this recipe and then we'll get started. All right, we are going to start out with a medium saucepan. Turn it on medium high heat, and then we'll add in some oil and our chicken. So while the chicken is cooking, I'm going to drain and rinse some black beans, and then I'm also going to just slice up half a red onion. I really like to cook our chicken part way through and then slice it and return it to the pan. However, how and when you slice your chicken up is totally up to you. This is just how I do it personally. All right, the chicken is all done cooking, so we are going to put it into like a medium sized bowl. This is just one of our salad bowls. Add about a half a cup of whatever your favorite buffalo sauce is. Give that a good mix until everything is combined and then we will work on the rest of the things. So the onions, the black beans, all the seasonings. All right, so while that is just kind of hanging out, we are going to put the same pan back on the heat and I'm going to add in those onions. And I'm actually gonna deglaze the pan a little bit with some water. All right, now that the onions are cooking down, we're gonna add in our black beans. So, Stir that in. And Wait, what are we making? I'm gonna go ahead and mix this all together. Wait, Because you're gonna end up just topping it over the rice anyway. And another thing that you can do with this actually is even just put it over a salad. That's a super great way to have this if you want something a little bit lighter than rice. This smells so good. I wish you guys could smell this. It's so, so yummy. Now to assemble these, you are just going to top these over some rice or a bed of lettuce and then add any desired toppings. So you could add cheese, sour cream, ranch dressing to the buffalo one, like whatever really floats your boat, you can totally customize this. And then you can either eat right away, of course, or you can store it in the fridge to enjoy throughout the week, which is one of our favorite things to do. I love making, especially lunchtime, a lot easier by having some things prepped in the fridge. So you can do whatever works for you, but these are both so, so tasty. So now we are just going to quickly put together the blueberry grunt. There's going to be the filling 
and then like the cobbler slash biscuit kind of thing. First thing you'll need is blueberries. Then you're going to add in some sugar. Then you're going to add in some lemon juice. Also you'll add in some cinnamon and nutmeg. And then for like the biscuits, you are going to grab some flour. You're also going to use some kind of milk. You will need some baking powder, salt, and last but not least, some butter. You're gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees and let that start heating up. And then we are going to grab a pan and we're gonna start cooking up the filling. All right, next we're going to make the biscuits. So you're going to start by adding in four cups. I meant two cups of gluten-free flour, not four cups. So we'll take half of that out. I was like, wow, that's a lot. Then we're going to add in four teaspoons of baking powder, just half a teaspoon of salt, about three tablespoons of butter. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this. And then I'm actually just gonna give this a good mix and kind of break apart that butter. If you have a pastry cutter, that works perfectly, but if not, you can always just use a fork like I'm doing here. You just want this to simmer for, you know, about 10 minutes. So we're gonna let it go for a few more minutes, just kind of stirring it occasionally. And then now back to the batter. Here we are just going to add one cup of almond milk, oat milk, whatever you have. Then you're gonna give this a good mix. And one thing to note is this is going to be like a very wet batter. It's not gonna be really tough or anything. It's just gonna stay very, very wet. And that's perfect. All right, the batter's all made right there but we're still waiting on these blueberries to kind of simmer a little bit longer so while we're waiting on that i'm just gonna start cleaning up the kitchen so that when we're done with this recipe we are done we don't have to do any more cleaning Perfect timing, this is looking really, really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the blueberries into this little baking dish, and then we will kind of start adding this biscuit mixture over top. You are the one that I will call when I'm drunk. You are the one that I just need to feel love. You save me from the broken house that I built. Finally, after organizing our pantry and all those cabinets, getting things nice and clean and making a gazillion recipes, <laughs> not actually a gazillion, but you know, we did a lot today. I wanted to remind you that homemaking truly, truly matters. When I was a little bit younger, I used to feel like others sometimes looked at homemaking as not as important as working outside the home or you know doing other things. And honestly, it can be a struggle. I think sometimes you can feel unappreciated and it's also hard that it's not measured with a paycheck or promotion, like some things outside of the home are. But for just a minute, imagine life without a clean home, without groceries or homemade food, and truly everyone's life would be be so much different. So whether you're a full-time homemaker or you work outside the home and still do homemaking once you get home, seriously, I want you to do this. Pat yourself on the back right now and feel reminded that it is so important. It really is a big deal and it's something that would absolutely be missed if you stop doing it. And if you have been struggling with homemaking, I've totally been there. I feel like we all have. Just remind yourself that it really is an important job and sometimes that's all you need to kind of get back going with it and just know that what you're doing really matters and you truly are amazing. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys that little spiel and remind you, but if you want to see loads more recipes, I have an entire homemaking playlist with, I don't know, maybe hundreds of recipes. I've shared so many over the years. So I will have that playlist linked down below or you can just find it on my channel. But today for the video that I'm going to be linking here at the end on the right side of the screen is going to be something different. I'm actually going to be linking our vlog channel because over there we are doing lots of kitchen renovations 
Kitchens behind the scenes. I know a lot of you guys have jumped over there and have been watching us kind of with the behind the scenes of our kitchen renovation and it's been so exciting. But if you haven't seen that and you're not already subscribed over on our vlog channel, go ahead and click this video right there and you can check it out and get all caught up. As always, thank you so much for being here and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Bye guys. Felix, you're not supposed to be on the counter. Felix, stop it. And then this. Felix. So I think I'm gonna move all that up to the Felix. Seriously. Someone cannot take a hint today.